Hello friends, this video on lines and angles part 15 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So based on whatever we have learned so far, we will quickly look at some of the questions based on intersecting lines, parallel lines and transversals. Question number one, state the property that is used in each of the following statements. If A parallel to B, then angle one is equal to angle five. So let us see that this is A, this line is A, this line is B and these two lines are parallel to each other. So this is how we denote parallel lines, that is the two lines saying that A and B are parallel to each other. Then angle 1 is equal to angle 5. Why these two angles are equal? Because they are corresponding angles. So the first property would be pair of corresponding angles are equal. So, pair of corresponding angles are equal. If angle 4 is equal to angle 6, so this is angle 4 and this is angle 6. So, these are alternate interior angles. So, since alternate interior angles are equal, therefore the lines are parallel. Because alternate interior angles are equal only when the lines are parallel. Angle 4 plus angle 5 is equal to 180 degree. So, angle 4 plus angle 5 which is this property this property is sum of interior angles on same side of transversal is equal to 180 degrees on same side of transversal is equal to 180 degrees so these are the three important properties with regards to transversal on parallel lines question number 2 in the adjoining figure P is parallel to Q, find the unknown angles. That means you will have to find the values of A, B, C, D, E and F. So let us start with the simplest one which can be found most easily. Now as we know that these two lines are parallel, so this angle is known. So which would be the corresponding angle for this angle? So an angle which lies over this line on this side of the transversal above the line. So angle D is corresponding to angle 20, to 125 degree. Therefore the value of D would be 125 degrees because they form a pair of corresponding angles. So we found out one angle. Now when you look at angle D and angle B, these are vertically opposite angles because you see this line, this line and this line. They are intersecting lines and B and D are opposite angles on the intersecting lines. Therefore, B will also be equal to D that is equal to 125 degree because these are vertically opposite angles. Now, let us talk about A. Now, when you look at A and B, they form linear pair, right? Because they are located adjacent to each other. They also give a sum of 180 degrees. Therefore, we can say angle A plus angle D is equal to 180 degrees. This is due to linear pair. Therefore, A would be equal to 180 degree minus B. That is 180 degree minus 125 degree, which is equal to 55 degree. So we found out A, we found out B, we found out D. So what would we see? Again, A and C are vertically opposite angles. Therefore, C will be equal to A, will be equal to 55 degree. That is because they form vertically opposite angles. So we now know A, B, C, D. So now we are left with E and F. Now E and F will always also be equal to each other because these are also vertically opposite angles. So these are the two intersecting lines. One is this line and the other one is this line. So E and F will also be equal but we will have to find out at least one value. Now when you look at angle E and angle A, can you establish any, any relation? Of course, they are also corresponding angles. So angle E is equal to angle A is equal to 55 degrees because these are also corresponding angles. Now angle E is 55 degrees, so angle F will also be equal to angle E that is 55 degree because they form vertically opposite angles. 
So you see, just with these concepts of vertically opposite angles, corresponding angles, we could actually find out so many unknown angles. So we found that angle E is 55 degree, angle F is also 55 degree, angle A is also 55 degree, B is 125 degree, C again is 55 degree and D again is 125 degrees. So that's how we could find out all these values. Question number three. In the given figure, the arms of two angles are parallel. So, which are the arms of two angles? That means AB, this actually means that AB is parallel to DE and DC is parallel to EF. If angle ABC is equal to 70 degree, then find angle DGC. So, DGC would be this angle. Now, when you want to find angle DGC, it here you just focus on this part of the image which shows that AB is parallel to DE and DC acts as a transversal. So, BC is a transversal on AB and DE. That is how it is. So, therefore, you can say that angle DGC is equal to angle ABC. Why? Because these are corresponding angles. Therefore, what is the value of angle ABC? It is 70 degree. Therefore, you can say that angle DGC is also equal to 70 degree. So, the first part is done. So, this angle is 70 degree. Now let us look at the second part where we have to find out angle DEF that is this angle. Now here you focus on this part where BC is parallel to EF that is given. So here DE acts as a transversal. So DE is acting as a transversal. Therefore which are the corresponding angles here? This angle and this angle. Therefore angle DGC is equal to angle DEF because these are a pair of corresponding angles. Now DGC we have just now calculated as 70 degree. Therefore angle DEF is also equal to 70 degrees. Question number 4. In the given figures below decide whether L is parallel to M. So let us look at the first figure. So we have to find out if these two are parallel. Now these two would be parallel only when one of those conditions are true. Either the corresponding angles are equal or the alternate angles are equal or the sum of the angles on the same side of transversal is 180 degrees. So one of these has to be true. So here we are given 57 degree as this angle. Let us call this angle as angle 1. So let us try to find out angle 1 because if these two are parallel then angle 1 should be equal to 123 degrees because these are corresponding angles. So let us try to find angle 1. Now angle 1 plus 57 degree is equal to 180 degree. That's because they form linear pair. Therefore angle 1 is equal to 180 degree minus 57 which is equal to 123 degree. So this angle 1 is 123 degree. So this angle and this angle these are corresponding angles. So we see that the corresponding angles are equal. So now you might ask that why is it that only if one of these property holds true the lines are parallel. That's because when the corresponding angles are equal the alternate angles will also be equal and then the sum of the interior angles on same side of transversal would also be 180 degree. Because you would have seen right when we proved each of these properties we made use of the other property. Right? When we wanted to prove that the corresponding angles are equal we made use of the property that sum of the uh, interior angles on same side of transversal is 180 degree. Similarly, when we wanted to prove that the sum of the interior angles is 180 degree, then we made use of the property that alternate angles are equal. So, all these properties are kind of interlinked to each other. So, even if we are able to prove one of these, we can say that the lines are parallel. Let us look at the next figure. So, here we have to prove if L is parallel to M or not. By looking at the figure itself, we feel that they are not parallel because you see the distance between them is changing with time. So they will not be parallel, but we have to prove that mathematically. So if these two are parallel, this would be the transversal. So 
for this 75 degree this would be the corresponding angle so let us call this angle 1 so angle 1 plus 75 degree that is 1 plus 75 degree is 180 degree because it forms linear pair therefore angle 1 will be equal to 180 degree minus 75 degree which is 105 degree so basically this angle is 105 degree so this angle and this angle are not equal so therefore angle 1 is not equal to 75 degree therefore L is not parallel to M. Now when the corresponding angles are not equal the alternate angles will also not be equal and therefore the lines would not be parallel. So with this we have reached towards the end of this lesson on lines and angles and I hope that this lesson would have helped you. So in, in geometry it is all about uh, a very good observation and um, more practice obviously. So I would advise you to practice more and more questions uh, not only from NCRT textbooks you can pick up other textbooks and start solving questions and I am sure you will gain a lot of confidence. So with this I would conclude this lesson. See you all on the next lesson. Thank you. Please visit examfear.com for free quality education. You can learn with a simple four-step learning process wherein you can watch video lessons, you can ask your questions, you can refer notes and you can take a free online test. We have content for class 6 to 12 on physics, chemistry, mathematics and biology along with practical videos. So please subscribe to our channel for daily updates. Thank you.